So you want to wash your car, but you don't have access to free flowing water, either through a garden hose or a pressure washer setup, because you might be living in a condo or you're an apartment dweller, or you might live in a city with heavy water restrictions or water bans, or you have a garage in your house, but it's not heated during the winter time and you don't want to freeze your pipes, so on and so forth. So what's the alternative? Well, in this video, I'm presenting the rinseless wash method. So no garden hose, no pressure washer setup needed. Very simple. I'm going to go over, by the way, all the tools, equipment, and the products that you need to do a good job. And I'll leave links to all of this in the description under the video for you guys to check everything out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm going to be doing a demonstration on a vehicle today. So it's my girlfriend's Nissan Rogue. Uh, it's actually quite dirty. Well, reasonably speaking, obviously. So it's been about a month since we last washed it. So it's a perfect candidate for this. As you can see, the paint is dirty. There's some dead uh, bugs on the front end uh, of the, uh, the bumper. There's a bit of water spotting on the hood as well on the vehicle too because uh, the vehicle sometimes sleeps outside so not in the garage and of course there's some dirt and grime accumulated on the wheels and tires and one thing that you'll also be seeing in this video that you don't see in many videos is how do you take care of the wheels and tires in a rinseless wash method so this is the ultimate tutorial on a rinseless wash after watching this video from the beginning to the end you're going to be an expert and you're going to be have an alternative finally that is safe to use because we often hear that is a rinseless wash going to scratch my car that's where the common sense aspect is very important guys so again if your vehicle comes back from a rally where you've been through an intense mud setup there's tons of dirt crime and a like one foot layer of mud on your car obviously you're not going to start with the rinseless wash method either bring it to an automated car wash to have all that junk removed with a brushless car wash right never the ones with rollers that's really going to scratch the paint uh, or you can first rinse all that gunk off because a rinseless wash doesn't mean that you never rinse the vehicle it just means that you don't have to rinse at the end so the perfect vehicle is actually one like today where it's not too dirty and grimy and we can do a good job so what do you first need so the basic Basic necessities. First of all, you're going to need a bucket. So you can do this mobily as well. So if you have a self-service car wash center near you, you can bring your own kit. So I like to have a five gallon bucket like this uh, with a gamma seal. So what this means is that hopefully you can tell, you see that white seal on top. So it's a gasket. When you're gonna close your bucket, because you're gonna come with your own water from your house. Well, if you turn it around, the water doesn't spill. So that's one thing you're gonna need one bucket, because in this case, you don't need multiple buckets. We're talking about a rinseless wash method here. Second thing I recommend is to have some sort of a grid card. So this is basically a water filtering system for the bottom of the bucket that you insert in your bucket right at the bottom just like that and this grid makes sure that all the dirt and grime and the grit stays below that grill and it doesn't go back into your wash uh, water with uh, containing the uh, rinseless wash solution so you're keeping everything safe and everything to prevent scratching or marring when you're doing the technique and by the way the rinseless wash the particularity of this it's not a traditional soap right so it is a polymer it's a synthetic polymer that blends with water i'm going to show you how to dilute it by the way it is very very simple when you understand how there's no mathematical calculations or uh, some uh, trickery involved this is very simple so the polymers what they do is they encapsulate and they emulsify dirt and they create kind of a bubble around that and they remove any negative or positive uh, charges that are on there and they're called zwitter ionic because it's chargeless there's no charge left and with the action of that and gravity it pulls all the dirt down into the bucket when you're putting your wash media to uh, rinse your wash media off of course you're going to see this in the demo once again so what else do you need uh, in the case of rinseless washes we have special sponges that were created for that uh, by the way again Ivan LaCroix had his engineering tasks uh, to help design these so this is the latest one this is the rag company ultra black sponge so this one here has better ergonomics now because you can take it in your hand and you'll notice all these squares this here is a special sponge so not only is it soft for the paint but it's going to have spaces here in between where all the dirt can go so there's areas where the dirt gets trapped 
and that way you're not rubbing the dirt on your paintwork. And by the way, you're applying the rinseless wash on the paint, you're not scrubbing it, as you're gonna see once again in the demo in a few seconds. Uh, another one that you'll often see is the Big Red Sponge by Optimum Polymer Technologies. So same principle, once again, you have all these dimples and squares where the dirt can get trapped inside and hence not scratch your paint. By the way, the lubrication level of a rinseless wash is next level, so it actually has more lubrication compared to your traditional soap or shampoo that you use to wash your car. So no worries as far as lubrication is concerned. Uh, next, for water, you can either use your tap water or if you're in a place uh, where you don't have access to um, a tap uh, or that kind of stuff, well, you can go to your pharmacy and just pick up some distilled water. So this here is a four liter container or about a gallon. Uh, you'll need traditionally about three gallons to do um, your rinseless wash because you're gonna put that in your bucket and do the mix. So this, you're getting water that has no minerals. So if you're scared because you're working outside, you don't want any water uh, or mineral deposits or water spots when you're done washing your car, uh, get demineralized water or deionized water or reverse osmosis water, whatever cleanest water you have access to this costs little to nothing right these jugs you can get that to do your mix uh, if you don't want to use the sponges you can use some plush microfiber towels like these from the rag company again don't stress about the products and equipment just yet i'll leave the links again in the description under the video uh, but you have plush towels and each towel is folded twice so once like this and another time and that way you get eight different faces right that you can switch to so you're always gonna have some clean faces when you're um, doing the rinseless wash method on your paint. So again, no stress, you're not scratching anything. And you're gonna get these plush, thicker piles, once again, to be very gentle on the finish. Now, another key to the rinseless wash is having some form of pressurized system without a pressure washer, right? So we have these pump sprayers. I did a full review on these from Marilex. So there's two types. There's the green bottles and the white bottles, basically. So both do pretty much the same thing. It's just that the Master Series is the entry-level green bottle ones. So these ones here are good for chemicals near the pH neutral or not harsh chemicals. And if you want to use them for a variety of different chemicals, for example, you have wheel cleaners or acid-based stuff, that kind of things, you're going to use the Industry Series in the Ergo line. So this one here has a higher chemical resistance. But what I like about these is not only is the construction rot solid, they come in different formats. So this one here is the 1500, so 1 1.5 liter size. Uh, this one here is the 2000, so a 2 liter size, so close to 60 ounces if memory serves me well. Uh, so when you're pumping them up, the pressure that they release is insane for just a pump sprayer. So we're going to pre-rinse or pre-treat the vehicle as you're going to see in the demo. And this is going to start to encapsulate all that loose dirt, grime and debris uh, and start to run it down the vehicle for you to have an easier time to clean the vehicle. So this, I say, is very key and you're going to see there's nothing to dilute in there i'm going to give you a trick to make the dilution ratios very very simple uh, there's another one from ik that i like a lot this is the multi pro 2 from ik sprayers another one that is built super rock solid but the marilex pump sprayers do have a lot more pressure coming out so i know a lot of you guys love those i have reviews by the way on all of these on my channel so go check those out if you want more details uh, now, for the chemicals, there's two of them that I recommend in this video. Uh, these are the two most used rinseless washes. So these are the actual chemicals to clean the car. Uh, the polymer, if you want, cleaners. So this one here from Optimum Polymer Technologies. This is Optimum No Rinse, also known as ONR. And I have this Pro Blend distributor on top. So basically here on the side, you have this graduate gradation marks and you basically twist this system up or down and this valve or this metering system goes up and down. So here right now I have it set to an ounce and a half if you notice that. So if I squeeze the bottle, it's going to pour and then it's going to suck up whatever it doesn't need back. And there you go. I have the perfect amount, 1.5 ounces. You take off the cap and you pour it in your bucket and you always have the perfect measurement. Or you can use just traditional measuring cups like this, whatever you guys want, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the cap also that comes with O&R, you can use that to measure your, um, your setup in there. Or the next one, this, what, this cap, by the way, on the McKees has a third of an ounce capability. And if memory serves me right, the cap 
on the ONR is exactly for 0.5 ounces because you need half an ounce of the optimum norins for every gallon of water. And the same dilution ratio applies to the McKees uh, 37N914, another classic rinseless wash that people absolutely love. A bit more lubrication compared to the ONR. Uh, this one smells amazing. It smells like apples. The ONR smells like chemical blueberries. So these are two top tier, top of the line rinseless washes. Doesn't really matter which one you pick. Uh, my slight favorite currently is the McKees. Just for that, a little better lubrication, but we're nitpicking here. These are two of the best. Uh, by the way, if you guys are out there and you're professional detailers, I know many of you guys watch my videos, drop a comment in the comment section to help other viewers understand. Uh, many of you guys use a rinseless wash on a daily basis. That's the only thing you have to actually wash cars, especially if you're mobile sometimes, right? Uh, and you guys can attest that if done properly and you know what you're doing, especially those who have been using it for many years, it doesn't scratch the finish if you use that common sense and you use a vehicle that's not caked in dirt and mud, right? So leave comments and if you have any tips or tricks for my viewers, leave those too. I love to read you guys, but also for the community, I think it's good to have this community feedback so people can feel confident and uh, understand all the tips and tricks that are needed to do a good job. So the uh, McKees N914, it has the same dilution ratio as the ONR, so half an ounce for every gallon of water. That's a 256 to 1 dilution ratio. And both of these, by the way, are very versatile because you can use, use these uh, in many dilution ratios and they talk about it on the side. So you can use it as a rinseless wash, as a waterless wash, as a clay lubricant, as a panel prep. You can use this as a quick detail spray or a drying aid for the exterior vehicle, for your interiors as well. I use it in the house to clean many things. You can even clean glass with this, uh, chrome parts, plastics, you name it, pretty much any surface. The cool thing about these is they do not leave any residue behind. And even if they dry on the paint, let's say you work outside for some reason, don't worry, they're not going to leave any water spotting. All they leave is polymer spots behind, which are very easy to wipe. Or you just rehumidify the surface with the pump sprayer, and then you can wipe, and it's as simple as that, right? Okay, well, so we have the two rinseless washes. These are two top tier. What other extras do, would you might need? So in this video, as I said, I'm also going to be showing you how to do the wheels and tires, because not a lot of rinseless wash tutorials show that, right? So you have an APC. Well, you're going to need that for many reasons. First of all, you can clean the wheels and tires with this. It's very versatile. It's an all-purpose cleaner. And you can also use it to remove any bugs and bug guts that are in the front of your vehicle. All that kind of dirt and grime, right? So as a pre-treatment, before you start applying the rinseless wash on the vehicle, you can use something like this. So this one is one I like a lot. The High Intensity APC Plus from McKees 37. Uh, you can dilute up to one part concentrate to four parts of water. So very economical. Uh, and this one here, if you can use it on your interior parts, you don't need to um, use a damp microfiber towel with water to neutralize the APC. So this is a very high quality one. So even if you let it dry on the vehicle, when you're rinsing it with the ONR, you're going to neutralize it, no problem. So very good for that. If you want something more specific, that's going to remove a bit more brake dust and uh, have some um, uh, anti-rust or corrosion inhibitors built in, one of my favorite tire and wheel cleaners, this is PNS Brake Buster. So the th same stuff that you use on your normal car wash, you can also use the only difference is you're not using car shampoo. But products like this for wheels and tires, fantastic, and you'll see how we do this. Also, if you want to specifically attack just your um, your bug guts and your grime and all that stuff, you can use a bug remover. One of my favorite ones, G Technique W8 V2 Bug Remover. So. Uh, we're going to have a few brushes that we're going to use, same as you'd normally do, right? So face of the wheels, uh, your tires, if you want an inner fender brush, that kind of stuff. No problemo. Go ahead and do that. And to dry the vehicle, uh, let me get that here. You're going to need a quality a microfiber drying towel, ideally something that's twisted loop because those are the ones that pick up the most water. Uh, and for the demo today, I'm using the Rag Company. This is the Gauntlet. So it had taken first place in a battle of microfiber drying towels that I had. So this is super plush. and This is going to be at the end. So now guys, I know you want me to jump directly into the demo. So let's go ahead and do that. And you're going to see how I dilute the product, how I prepare the spray bottles and how I apply the uh, rinseless wash on the vehicle and how you do the stuff and even how we wash the wheels or clean the wheels and tires. Let's go ahead. Okay guys, so we're going to start preparing our equipment, tools, and of course the rinseless wash solution. So let's say you've arrived at your self-service wash station uh, or you're in the uh, garage of the apartment or condo where you live or in your house or you work outside. Regardless, you're going to have your uh, wash bucket. You're going to take off your lid if you had the gamma seal lid. And inside there right now, I have three gallons of water. So you're going to get uh, a few gallons of water. The best quality water, the better if you have access to distilled water, deionized, demineralized, 
or reverse osmosis. Regardless, uh, it doesn't really matter in the end if you only have access to tap water as well. Don't worry about it. So you're going to take your uh, rinseless wash. In this case, we're using the McKees 37N914. You're going to measure the quantity necessary. So don't forget the 256 to 1 dilution ratio. That means half an ounce for every gallon of water. So since I have three gallons, that's one and a half ounces that we'll be measuring. So I'm going to take the measuring cup and one and a half ounces. We're going to pour that in there. You're going to rinse the cup off. If you use the uh, cap, by the way, my friend Ivan LaCroix reminded me that this is a third of an ounce. So you can use that to measure the uh, rinseless wash solution as well to the appropriate dilution. We're going to take our grit gar guard now. So this is the, gar the grill that goes in the bottom. You can stir the mix that's in there or just use your hands as well to stir that around a bit to distribute that you're going to notice that this does not foam inside the bucket that's normal this is not a traditional shampoo you're only going to see a bit of uh, like polymer suds on top but they quickly dissipate and this one smells amazing so now that our wash solution is ready we're going to have our wash media that we're going to dunk in there but before we do so we're going to prepare our pump sprayer so now that we did the dilution, we know that in this bucket, that's the appropriate dilution, right? So instead of figuring out the uh, dilution for the pump sprayers, what you're going to do is you're simply going to dunk the container in there and just fill out your container, not to the top, but to the fill line, because you need air in a pump sprayer for it to work correctly. But here you go. So this is the pump sprayer filled with the uh, solution at the appropriate dilution ratio. You're going to pump this up now, whatever pump sprayer you're using, and we're going to be good to go to start pre-treating the vehicle. So it's that simple as far as the pump sprayers are concerned. And we're going to have a few other wash media. So you have your microfiber towels that are plush. You're going to dunk those inside there, give that a little swirl so that way they're pre-soaking. And the same goes for the uh, wash sponges. So either the Big Red sponge or the Ultra Black sponge from the Rag Company for today's demo. I'm just gonna be using this one here because I prefer the ergonomics a bit. This is the more recent version. So we're gonna dunk that in there. And now we're ready to start cleaning the vehicle. Okay guys, so the first order of business is we're gonna use our pump sprayer that's uh, filled with the rinseless wash and we're going to pre-spray the entire vehicle. So this is called the pre-treatment and it's what it's gonna do, it's gonna to help to encapsulate the majority of the loose dirt help to start emulsify all that dirt and grime as well and act as a lubricant when we're actually going to be uh, washing the surface. So don't forget your pump sprayers to make sure that they're fully pressurized when you're pumping them up. You hear that? So that sound means that it's fully pressurized, ready to go. So you're really going to apply this all over the vehicle. Don't forget to pull the windshield wipers up if you can. And there you go. You can adjust the jet to make it either thinner or wider. And this one here has tons of pressure. So we're applying this to the wheels and the tires and the body. The purpose is to knock the most amount of dirt and grime. And when people ask how long does it take, it's actually more efficient or quicker to do rinseless wash because you don't have all the pressure washer set up or the garden hose to pull out and all that stuff. So you can do a decent size SUV like this, uh, a compact SUV in roughly 25 minutes to half an hour. If you have a compact vehicle, you can do that in 15 to 20 minutes. Of course, the first time you do this, you're gonna need to gain some experience, right? So don't worry. Uh, as you continue on gaining the experience, you're gonna figure out as well uh, what routine or regimen works best for you and you're gonna cut down on all that time. What I like about the Marilex pump sprayers is that they give long working time. So you pump them up a bit and they seem to spray forever. So I really wanna be generous with the amount that I put on there. We're gonna pre-spray the vehicle. I'm gonna do this part here for the demo because filming and detailing is a very complicated thing a lot more complicated than people think. Each video can take me from 10 to 15 hours to produce. So there we go. So we fully drenched the vehicle with the uh, rinseless wash solution. And now we're gonna go ahead and bring our bucket over. And 
we're gonna start to apply the rinseless wash solution. So when I say apply, you're not scrubbing the surface, guys. It is very important. You're gonna be gentle with this. So you have the choice. We have microfiber towels, wash media, many different sides. So you're always using a clean side to do the surfaces uh, or you're using the black sponge. Uh, if you do have some bug guts and bug grime and that kind of stuff in the front, you can use your bug removers or an all-purpose cleaner, which is what I'm gonna use today. So for the bugs that were on the car, I'm gonna use the G-Technic W8 V2 bug remover. So it's already primed. So you pre-spray that. You're gonna let that dwell on the surface. That's what it's made for. So again, just like a regular car wash, right? So the bug remover is gonna do its job to help you remove those bug guts safely because the chemicals do the work for you so you don't have any heavy scrubbing to do, right? So we applied that on the surface. There we go. And of course, once you're done applying the rinseless wash, you're gonna neutralize all of that anyways. So don't worry about that. The same as if you'd be normally washing your vehicle. So when I say we're going to apply the rinseless wash, I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can see, by the way, like for a traditional wash, we work from top to bottom, right? So we'd start with the roof, obviously, but for the purposes of this video, uh, I'm gonna start with the hood so you can see how we do this. All right, guys, so when you start with your sponge, you're gonna get it to the point where it's just dripping wet like this, right? So not completely dripping, but to the point where it's barely dripping like that, that's the correct amount. And when I say you're applying this to the surface, you're just gently going to pass over it. There you go. And you can flip sides to use a clean, fresh side. And what this is doing, once again, it's encapsulating the loose dirt and grime. And the cool thing when you're using a rinseless wash is when you're gonna dunk this back into the wash bucket, the rinseless solution is gonna release all the dirt and grime. It's gonna fall in the bottom of the bucket and stay underneath the grit or the grit guard. So don't worry, your wash solution is always gonna stay clean. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Dump it in there, get it to the point where it's barely dripping. We're going to finish this hood. And there we go. So you can do the rest of the vehicle this way, or I'm gonna show you the front bumper now with the uh, microfiber towels. Okay, guys, so now the bug remover has been dwelling a bit on the surface, so it did its thing. So we're gonna take the microfiber towels again, wring them out, just to the point where they're barely dripping with the rinseless solution. We're gonna fold it once, we're gonna fold it twice. So now we have many clean sections. And once again, you apply the rinseless solution on the surface. And we can tell here the bugs are being removed very easily. You can also use a wash mitt if you guys like that. So let me show you here. Look at that, hopefully you can see up close. You see the bugs there? and the bug guts, they come off super easily. So you can flip to a clean side. And now we're continuing to apply to the surface. Again, we're not scrubbing here. You're just going over the surfaces gently. So now we are going to flip. Look, they're even, even the bugs are coming off on my finger. So we're gonna flip to a clean and dry side. We can do, not clean and dry, sorry to a clean side of the towel. See those bugs, they just came off super easily. Once again, here you go, see those? So chemicals are your friend. And this one, ideally guys, by the way, wear some protective gloves, I always do in my videos, but for this one, oh uh, boy, I forgot to wear the gloves, doesn't matter. But case in point, wear some protective gloves. And there you go. So again, more bugs. This here now is fully, fully cleaned. So if you wanna make sure if you used any of the uh, cleaners, like a bug remover or an APC, you can just spray a bit more of that rinseless wash. When you're done, that way you're neutralizing that chemical. And it's as simple as that. And this is also going to be our drying aid when it's time to dry the vehicle. So let me give you a perspective from the side. You're gonna see just how quick this can be. Uh, once again, 
Don't get discouraged when you're doing a new method or a new technique for the first time. It's normal, you're learning. You're gonna get better as you gain more experience. And as I said, a compact SUV like this, uh, when you gain more experience, you're gonna be able to knock out in 25 to 30 minutes tops. Smaller vehicle, 15 to 20 minutes, compact car. So uh, it's actually pretty fast. So let's go ahead and do this. So again, you have your sponge to the point where it's barely dripping. You always work from top to bottom, but we're applying this on the surface. So you're not really scrubbing. You're just applying the rinseless wash. There you go. You can flip the applicator sponge when you're washing. Make sure you get underneath those handles. Every now and then you dunk it back for every panel or every other panel. And here you go. You're applying the rinseless wash. Flip the sponge. So you're using common sense. And if done properly, in the correct conditions, of course, like you saw this vehicle was not caked in dirt and mud. So it had bug guts. Yes, it was dirty but it wasn't caked in a thick layer of mud and grime. And I can see all that dirt just getting released there. So for your wheel wells and arches, it all depends on the amount of clean that you want, right? So you could use brushes and get into there. That's not the point of this video. This was mainly to show you the techniques, but you can go as far as you guys want. To clean these, you can use some microfiber towels to get in there and to do a clean job. Again, we're gonna flip. We're gonna clean this mirror here. So you're just applying the rinseless wash solution. There you go. And it's already the drying aid that's on the surface. So that is the cool part because you don't have to use a drying aid afterwards. You can if you want to. So it's gonna add more lubrication on the surface, but there's enough lubrication with this itself and when I talk, let me give you here, perhaps you can see this, but look inside there. You see these, that dirt that's in the pockets? That's when we say that the dirt has areas to go into. So it goes on there instead of staying on the surface and potentially scratching or marring the paint. So if done correctly, used properly with the proper tools, the proper equipment, the proper rinseless wash, absolutely no problem. Now, if you're using Microfiber towels, because once again, you can use these, get them to the point where they're barely dripping wet, flip them, and what we're doing with these is when you're on the surface, you're gonna try and roll like that, right? So you're dragging and rolling at the same time. So you're not dragging the dirt on the surface, then you flip to a clean and dry side, and you continue to roll and lift. So let me give you a demo. So here, for example, now, I'm on the surface, I'm rolling and lifting as I go. Flip to a clean side, flipping, rolling. Then you flip the towel to expose fresh sides, flipping and rolling, and then flip the towel, flip and roll, and there you go. You pretty much did an entire panel. So even using microfiber towels, it's very quick, or a wash mitt, whatever wash media makes sense to you, you can go ahead and do that. So once you're done cleaning from top to bottom, uh, perhaps you did your wheel wells as well. What's particular for this method, contrary to the regular wash method with pressure washers and garden hoses, uh, I traditionally like to start with cleaning the wheels and tires when I do the normal wash, because uh, for me, those are the dirtiest parts of the vehicle. I want to get rid of those first. 
Uh, a lot of people do them at the end too. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. As long as you use safe washing and drying methods, guys, uh, don't overthink the moment. Do what works best for you in your world with your regimen. Uh, here though, for the rinseless wash, I prefer to wash the wheels and tires at the end because the wash solution, that is one bucket because we don't have multiple buckets like the regular wash, uh, you don't have to worry as much if there's a bit dirt and grime in there. So you're going to finish your wheels and tires with that instead of the opposite, right? So uh, that would make great sense. So we're going to do the uh, wheels and tires and then we're going to dry the vehicle and you're going to see just how simple it is. So let me pull you in. Let's do a wheel and tire. Okay guys, so to clean the wheels and tires, pretty simple. If you remember at the beginning, we did uh, the pre-treatment or pre-rinse with the rinseless wash and the pump sprayer. Uh, if you're to a point where it's a bit dry, don't worry, just add some more. It's gonna knock the loose dirt and grime. And there you go, now we can start washing. So we're gonna use chemicals like a normal wash if you want. So a lot of people like to use all-purpose cleaners because uh, while well, they're inexpensive, they can be diluted and used on multiple surfaces like wheels, the tires, fender wells, interior, exterior, so on and so forth. Or you can use uh, a dedicated wheel and tire cleaner, which I like. So this one here, PNS Brake Buster, uh, because this one, ha well, emulsifies and breaks down dirt and grime. It has corrosion inhibitors or rust inhibitors built in, so why not? And it just does a great job at lubricating as well. And it's going to remove the browning or blooming off the tires. So we're going to prime the sprayer. You're going to spray that on like you would normally on the wheels. There you go. And then you're going to take your traditional tire brush, spray a bit of that on there. You're gonna scrub the tire walls. And by the way, you could just use the rinseless wash to clean your wheels and tires. Uh, however, I find that on wheels and tires, you want to use something uh, with a bit more cleaning power for this specific task. So yes, the rinseless wash will get it relatively clean, but to remove browning and blooming, you might as well use a wheel and tire cleaner. And for the dirt, grime, and a bit of brake dust, use a dedicated wheel cleaner. So we're going to have our brush that we're going to have for the face of the wheels. Going to dunk that in a bit of the rinseless wash solution. We're going to scrub the faces, so use something gentle. You can use a wash mitt if you have gloss black wheels. Basically, whatever you guys would normally use to clean your wheels and tires for this demo. I'm not going to go into the wheel barrels because it would be too long for the video, but you, you get the point. You can use a wheel and barrel brush. And these now are some fully cleaned wheels. We removed all the dirt, all the grime, and the tires are cleaned as well. The only difference is instead of using a pressure washer setup or a garden hose, we're using the rinseless wash setup. And for the uh, inner fenders, if you want to, again, you go as far as you want. You can dip your fender well brush and start scrubbing all that gunk off if you want. Or you can also use your, uh, your microfiber towels it's as you want. You go as far as you want with this setup, but of course, for the inner fender wells, there are some limits that a rinseless wash method can do. If you want to get these fully, fully cleaned, of course, using a pressure washer is always best. So just don't expect the same level of results for obvious reasons for the fender wells, but you can get darn near close, right? So knock that off. Look all that dirt and grime. That's on the towel. This goes to the bottom. That's why I like to finish with the wheels and tires. So now we clean the wheels, the tires, the inner fender wells, all that stuff. What do you do? You're going to take your rinseless wash solution again, and you're just going to rinse that off. So this is kind of like your pressure washer, right? And this is going to not only help to remove the dirt and grime, 
but it's, it's gonna rinse. So I finished my solution here. You can go for your second tank if you want, but I basically neutralized whatever was on there right now. So no dangers and we're ready to dry. You're simply gonna take a uh, dry microfiber towel to dry it, but let's first start by showing you how to dry the paintwork. Okay guys, so it's time to dry the surface. Now, thankfully, the uh, rinseless wash that's on there is our drying aid. So it encapsulated the dirt and grime, it lifted it off the surface, and it's also acting as a buffer or a lubricant between the paintwork and your drying towel. So there should be no scratching or marring. So take something plush like the uh, towel I recommended to dry your vehicle from the Rag Company. This is their gauntlet microfiber drying towel or whatever towel you want. And there you go. If you want the additional lubrication or add a bit of gloss and pop and some slickness on the paint when you're uh, towel drying, you can use a drying aid or a quick detail spray. So you're gonna spray this over and then towel dry and it's gonna speed up the process. You wouldn't use a blower in this case because you're not blowing the dirt, right? You wanna pick it up with a microfiber towel. This again is not a traditional wash method, but you go everything as you normally would. in a regular wash and the surface is now squeaky clean and it's going to look nice you pick all of this stuff up you go over it and you're going to be good to start driving as soon as you're done so this is how simple this method is there are no worries and as you can tell there are no bug guts left hopefully you can it translates well on camera the purpose of this video, of course, is to give you a tutorial on the tips and tricks on how to do things, not necessarily to actually do the cleaning of a, video, of a car. If you want to see me do a rinseless wash on a full vehicle, just let me know. All right, so for the rest of the vehicle, the same applies. You would towel dry. And once again, even with me speaking here, you can see how rel relatively quick this process is. So imagine, if you're efficient and you're not filming a video while you're doing this, it can be very, very quick. And again, there is no worries to scratch or mar or damage the paint if you do things correctly. Use common sense. Again, you're not using this method. If you have a bunch of dirt, grime and mud caked on the vehicle, I remind you that a rinseless wash doesn't necessarily mean that you never rinse. It just means that there's no need to rinse at the end of the process like we're doing now. Because all you need to do is towel dry. But by all means, if it's caked with a layer of thick dirt, mud, and all that crap, you're going to first start by pre-rinsing the vehicle, right? So the paint, it's fully clean. I'm going to bring you in for a close-up when we're done. But for the principles of this video, so you guys can see, when you're done the paintwork and the gloss, you'd come back and do the wheels and tires. So you're gonna take whatever drying media you have and you're going to dry the wheels and tires. Again, you're gonna see just how much lubrication this adds and then dry the tire face. And there we go, so we have some clean and dry wheels and tires. And now it's ready to apply your tire dressing of choice. Because again, you can do the same stuff as you would with a traditional wash, right? So you would finish with a tire dressing to give it that last detailed look. I'm gonna do those fender wells and the arches. And there you go, you have clean wheels and tires. So let me bring you in for a close up so you guys see what we did. So look at the paint. Remember all the water spots? So those are pretty much gone. It's nice and slick. The car was ceramic coated, so it does help keeping the, the grime and dirt away and keeping it cleaner for longer. Look at the front bumper. Gone are those bugs and the bug guts. So this surface is clean. There's no dirt left. So of course the glass is sparkling, but if we look at the paint up close, clean, nothing. So it leaves no residue behind. That's the cool thing 
about this. Same for the plastic trim. If you guys remember how dirty this was. So you're basically getting a clean vehicle. There's absolutely no worries, no problems. Let me pull you in here so you can see the wheel and tire. So no more of that browning, no more of that blooming. You get some clean wheels. The inner fender wells, again, this depends on how far you want to go, but we did like kind of the edge work here just quickly, and this is clean enough. And by all means, if you want to go further and scrub inside the wheel barrels with a barrel brush and go deeper in your fender wells, the point is you see how clean this looks compared to the non-clean side. So this is what a dirty wheel and tire looks like. So you can see all the browning on the tire. You can see how dirty the wheels are. So we still have to clean this and look at the inner fender wells. Not as nice, right? Not as nice. So we got that gloss black, that gloss back, I mean. Nice clean surface. And if we look here at the profile, you're getting some nice gloss and nice shine, as you would with a traditional shine and everything is clean. So that's the rinseless wash method, guys. I'm gonna go and do the rest of the vehicle. All right, guys, so I finished doing the entire vehicle using the rinseless wash method. So let's have a look at the end results. So as you can see, paintwork looks pretty good, right? Gone are those pesky water spots that we had at the beginning. The glass looks good. By the way, any touch-ups you need to make, you can use a regular glass cleaner at this point. So same process as you would normally finish up with in a normal wash. Again, the uh, bugs and bug guts were all taken care of. So nothing left. The surface, of course, squeaky clean. Nothing here. So you get that gloss restored, the gloss and shine. It leaves no residue behind. So what you're seeing is the actual finish. The wheels and tires themselves, no more browning on the tires. They're clean, ready to go. You can apply your favorite tire dressing now as you normally would to finish these off. So there's no dressing now, but the inner arches. So we just did the portions here. But as I said, if you want to go deeper in with your fender well brush, you can do that as well. And if you go, if you want to go in the wheelbarrows too, like you normally would again with a vehicle. So no bugs, no bug guts. The glass is looking nice. The shine is there. Now, a lot of people ask the question, Pan, would you do this to your own car? Well, I don't have the need to because I prefer using the two bucket wash method, the traditional methods, because I have my pressure washer set up. I have a water deionizer. So that's the method I prefer with a foam cannon and all that stuff, traditional shampoo, that's what I'm used to, 25 years of detailing, and that's what I like. But you guys, you use the rinseless wash, if that's what you wanna use, if you wanna save some water, save on electricity, cut on budget costs, but more importantly, if you're in a place where you have no access to free flowing water, no pressure washer set up, no garden hose, know that there is a viable alternative once again, using common sense and the tips I gave in this video. So if it's covered in a thick layer of mud, you're gonna to wanna to pre-rinse all of that off. So you can rinse the vehicle. Rinseless wash doesn't mean you never rinse, it just means you don't rinse at the end. Or so bring it to a detailer if it's fully, fully, deta fully, fully uh, layered and caked in dirt and grime. But for moderate, to low levels of dirt. As you saw here, was a perfect candidate. We still had bug guts and all that kind of stuff. You can get rid of those and you're still gonna get the awesome results. So I mean, for cleanliness, definitely. You don't have to be scared about scratching or marring the paint. If you do things properly, use a good rinseless wash. You're gonna have tons of lubrication. Use quality tools and products. And this is what you can expect. So barely, just a little bit of residual rinseless wash on the floor but nowhere near, of course, as I normally get with my pressure washer setup, so that's another good thing. And in the wash bucket, let me show you. So this is about, I guess there's probably a gallon left in there. Don't forget, we filled our um, pump sprayers with a solution. 
and we used some of it, of course, to clean the car. So you're not using much. And again, for a vehicle this size, if you're not talking and just working efficiently, you can expect to knock it out in 25 to 30 minutes. As you gain experience, of course, you're gonna get to know your regimen, know your routine. And on a smaller vehicle, like a compact car, or a smaller, uh, smaller mini car, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So guys, wasn't that easy? Again, I'll leave links to all the uh, tools, equipment, and products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. Uh, again, drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, did you ever do a rinseless wash? Which one is your favorite one? Do you have any other tips and tricks for my viewers, especially if you're a professional out there? Uh, we wanna hear some feedback from you guys that do this on a daily basis. I think it's good for the community. Uh, if you're new to the channel and haven't done so yet, consider clicking the subscribe button and that way you'll subscribe to my channel and never miss my future videos uh, and so guys any other ideas you want to see in future tutorials like these ultimate tutorials that I do leave a comment let me know what do you want to see in future videos so guys thanks for being there thanks for watching and in the meantime don't forget keep it tight keep it clean and I'll see you on the next one